political parties. Only this can guide us. We have got freedom of association in Article 21 in this constitution. Yes, we've got the right to form political parties in Article 17 in this constitution. We've got the right in Article 5 that the executive, the judiciary, and the parliamentarians will uphold and protect the rights enshrined in this constitution, including, where applicable, natural persons like you and me and legal persons like political parties. Political parties must, not may, not perhaps, or any of those doubtful things, or could be, must, shall, respect and uphold this. And that's a serious thing. And we can all go and use what we think. You are entitled to your opinion. Think. Your opinion goes as far as the right of another citizen starts. You cannot infringe upon that. So, what is a constitution? What constitutes us? It's a body of fundamental principles according to which a country state is governed. Fundamental, the basic principles we need to have so that we can be governed with justice. From this is where all our laws are derived from. Because in this, it will tell you, Parliament will make this law. This is the basis of us. In Article 1, number 6 of the Namibian Constitution, it says, this Constitution shall be the supreme law of Namibia. And this is why Comrade Founding Father is holding it up high. It is the supreme law. No other law from anybody, from a political party, supersedes that. Let me make it absolutely clear. Perhaps, let me say this. Let me make it categorically clear, as our founding fathers always used to say. I am not saying this. It's not Dr. Itula saying this. I am reading it from the Constitution. So we need to make a distinction when our constitution says all persons shall be equal before the law. Persons have got two meanings. The natural person and the legal person established as a result of you going to Ministry of Trade and putting together a company. That's a legal person. But that legal person has got the same right as a natural person. So if you broke this chair, while you are sitting on it, you broke John and Penny and Company's chair. But John and Penny and Company don't have ears, don't have legs, don't think, can't go to court, can't go and report you to the police. They need a representative. Article 5 is the first article in the third chapter of our Constitution. The third chapter is the fundamental rights and freedoms. Their freedom waters, their blood waters our freedom. The rights and freedom that the people of Undangwa must exercise. Without question, without anybody telling you what to do, inherent in your convictions. It reads, the fundamental rights and freedoms enshrined in this chapter shall be respected and upheld by the executive, that is the cabinet ministers, the legislature, that is the parliamentarians, the judiciary, that is the judges, and all organs of government every one of them. If you go to the police station, your fundamental rights are protected by them and they must uphold them. They can't just put you in the chicken and lock you away 
until whoever you've got your right, even if you stole something, even if you committed a crime, you still have your right protected. Article 131 of the Namibian Constitution states that no repeal or amendment of any any the most important word in the whole thing there is any of the provisions of chapter 3 here of insofar as such repeal or amendment diminishes or detracts from the fundamental rights and freedoms contained and defined in this chapter shall be permissible it is not permitted for the rights in the constitution to be amended in that chapter or to be diminished in any form. There were, as I said, grapevines produced a lot of wine, different of them, intoxicating, etc. There were floating things that somehow the constitution or the, the electoral act will be changed so that the winning political party's president will become automatic, automatically the president of Namibia. What a myth. Where do these people sit in their parliaments? What do they read? And if they do, what do they understand? This article clearly states we are stuck as Namibians with chapter 3 of the Constitution. And in chapter 3, it states that every citizen shall have the right to participate in peaceful political activities. It stated you can own private property. That's why we've got Erini and all these farms from colonial times that we can't do anything about. It's because of this. Compatriots, comrades, we can't change a lot of things that we think we can change. It's good to think. But this binds us. And any reveal of anything of that kind will not be valid, even if we do it. Take an oath of office with a hand up. A solemn promise to the best of their ability. The words in here are critical. The word strife means I am human, I can fail. The word best of my ability means I will drive myself to the end until I give up. And this is to uphold, protect and defend as the supreme law of the Republic of Namibia, the Constitution and faithfully to obey <coughs> execute and administer the laws of the Republic of Namibia and I will endeavor to ensure justice the glue of democracy not only to the citizens of Namibia but to the inhabitants of Namibia. We've got people who are not Namibian citizens, but the oath of office of our president obliges him to endeavor to ensure that justice for all the inhabitants triumphs. The injustice will not triumph. And only when that is acknowledged and realized by the person executing that oath shall justice in this country triumph. It's not indicative, not implied that that's not what those who have taken the oath have meant. So, we need to have a separation of these powers. You can't have a government official coming to a constituency where they don't belong, where they don't have a legitimate right to vote, coming 
with a government car official driven by civil servants being paid by this government to come and choose to support one candidate. Political parties have got officials that have got duties as chiefs of political activities in those areas. The Swapo Party has got Comrade Nelongo in Oshana. Article 13.1 of the Swapo Party Constitution states that the regional coordinator shall be the chief, chief administrator of the party political activities, including campaigning for elections. What happened to Comrade Nelongo? What happened to all the other regional coordinators of all the other political parties? Why do you have interference in the internal affairs of this constituency? When you have taken an oath of office, whether as a minister or a deputy minister, to participate, to, to protect and uphold the constitution and what is contained in the constitution of Namibia and its laws, and the electoral law makes provision for these candidates, citizens of Namibia, with absolute equal rights to participate and to convince the electorate who is best positioned to filter the wishes of the citizens of this constituency. No one else can convince them. And let those candidates, all five of them, all five of them, I wish them well, present your manifesto to the electorate. Convince them and let them be the final judge of your presentations. No one else. Ministers and government officials take almost a similar oath. Right. Oh, thank you. Right. Now, get on to the next slide, please. Now, Article 17. That is the most important article for the purposes of elections in Namibia. Article 17 says, all citizens shall have the right, shall, not may, shall. When a law says shall, you've got no choice. Shall have the right to participate in peaceful political activities intended, the intention is to influence the composition and policies of government, to influence the composition. The composition of government from the bottom local authority up to president, you have that right. It is your birthright. It is right in the Namibian constitution. It's a freedom whose blood waters that freedom. It's a freedom that we attained because of the struggle and the sacrifices, supreme sacrifices, of many Namibians. No one can take that away from you. What is meant by influence? Influence the composition and policies of government at all these levels. At all the levels. You've got the right to do that. The only qualification to exercise this right is being a citizen. Nothing else. Now, it continues to say, all citizens shall have the right to form and join political parties. You have that right to form and join political parties. As I said right at the beginning, I am not and I have no intention to form a political party. Now, this is where the clever bit of legal writing comes in. The way end. End. And then the words is followed by semicolon. Once you 
join a political party, once you form one, subject to this, to such qualifications, prescribed by law as unnecessary in a democratic society to participate. Once you join that political party, if you qualify like having 500 signatures in each region and you are a Namibian citizen, once you satisfy the prescription of the law, you then have the right to participate in the conduct of the public in the only way which is important here. You see how wonderful this words are. Whether that's the only way that is important. That way makes us distinction of a choice. Whether you do participate directly, it's your freedom, or through freely chosen representatives. Remember, these rights are for citizens. Yeah? Political parties are not citizens. Political parties are not citizens. But because they are registered, they've got one sole purpose in section 135 of the Electoral Act, Act 5 of 2014. It says that the principal object of political parties is to participate in democratic elections. That's the principal object. But this right is reserved for citizens. So who is going to come and say, Dr. Itula, you don't have a right to participate in political activities, peaceful political activities, intended to influence the composition of government and its policies, when that right is enshrined in that constitution. And I am a citizen. Where does anyone whatsoever derive that right to tell any citizen, and in this case, Dr. Itula, that you can't participate in peaceful political activities? Where do they get them from? As I said, you are entitled to your opinion. You can have subjective thoughts as to what is right and what is not right. But that right is inherent in my citizenship. The choice is placed in this way, whether directly, there is no other Oxford Dictionary or even UNAM Dictionary that can tell me the different meaning of the word direct. The direct qualifications. The qualifications, I have stated them earlier. You need 150 registered voters to support your intention. Not that they voted for you. Neither are you a candidate until you are duly registered in accordance with the laws, should you ever call yourself a candidate, you may have the intention to be a candidate, but you are as yet not a candidate until you cross <coughs> that boundary. And that boundary can only be crossed in October on the 16th, in my case. When the 16th of October comes, I can take all of this, my ID for Namibia, my registers card, and a 10,000 that I paid to the Inland Revenue and say, I've got everything that is required for me to be a candidate. And I thank the Namibians who entrusted me with that ability to do that on the 16th of October, and indeed the foot soldiers who have not been paid a penny. They did it out of their convictions. So, <laughs> eligibility for election as president. Our Article 28, Number 3 of the Namibian Constitution, every citizen, again, this is where it's distinct, not a political party, citizen, of Namibia by birth or descent.
said, I am by bed. I was born in old location. So, no question about that one. <laughs> Over the age of 35, I didn't go to the head maker to make these whites. It's nothing to do with age. There are a lot of young people who call people old. I'm not old. I've got advanced age. Okay? All these people have got advanced age. That word old should disappear from us. Old people and all sorts of things. People with advanced age. They're still young. Up here in India. So, and who's eligible to be elected to office as a member of the National Assembly? That means that if you've got a criminal record, even if you qualify here and you are not, you are not eligible because you've got a criminal record. There are certain degrees of moralities that prohibits you from seeking public office. And Namibians should be looking at the credibilities of those when you choose your leaders. So if you are a criminal, you cannot qualify. But if you satisfy all of that, the word here is shall. Shall be eligible. Eligibility is conditional upon you satisfying the provision of the law in order for you to participate as a candidate. Lawmakers cannot be lawbreakers. That's why that has been placed there. That your eligibility to participate as a president should be that you are not a criminal, have never been convicted of a criminal offense. Because lawmakers simply can't be lawbreakers. And we've had a few, or we have a few, they are still hiding. So, when we said right at the beginning, this is the constitution from where everything emanates, from where the laws come about. Once we made this, that a citizen can participate in political activities and be a president, all of this will be put in a law of parliament. We can't write everything in the constitution, otherwise the constitution would be quite a big book. So we put them in laws. Now, here it says, the procedures to be followed for the nomination of candidates for the elected as president, and for all matters necessary, including your qualifications, to ensure free and fair electoral processes taking place and effective election of a president shall be determined by an act of parliament. So they know one who's got an automatic right to the presidency of this country. We all have, every citizen has that right. Now, that act that is being referred here is the Electoral Act, Act 5 of 2015. But it also says the act in parliament provided on condition, having given the rights to every citizen, we remember Article 10 of the Namibian Constitution, which says we are equal before any law. So the electoral act that is going to be enacted must make provision for registered political parties. That way we are all fair. But as I said, political parties don't have legs and ears and eyes. They need to nominate a candidate to act in the place of this creature that has got no legs and eyes, can't talk. That person is representing the political party. The human being is presented here. The political party's provision is here. Two provisions. It's supported by a minimum number of registered voters. Minimum means this 500. There's no maximum. So I'm inviting everybody here and everybody in the country to go and get the papers and register if you are supporting me for the candidacy. 
the more the merrier. Yes, I'm prepared to get that mandate from the nation. So anybody supported by that to be determined by the act of parliament. So the electoral act determined that and said 500. Plus remember, right at the beginning, there was no act that determined this. That's why we've got in Zambezi, another political party that has got, I don't know how many members, and still go contesting for presidents. Okay? But the act was not there. So they were working on this one. In the absence of an act, there's no authority. So, 500 voters, that's what I have. And it's joined by this lack of knowledge of our laws. That's why some of these citizens had actually been intimidated and even chased away. But again, that is the nature of discourse in a society of this nature. What is required then to be nominated as a presidential candidate? That is now marrying Article 28 of the Namibian Constitution and Article 5, um, sec uh, 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 Section 5, 72 of Act 5 of 2014. What is required? It says a person, person. Now here, we are talking about the natural person and the legal person. A person may, this is discretionary, okay, if you want, you may only be nominated as a candidate for an election to the office of president if the person qualifies to be elected as president by virtue of Article 283. What is that telling us? It's telling us that you are a citizen, you are 35, you are not a criminal, and then you can go. That's what it's telling us. Okay? So, again and again, the representative of a political party as president is not representing themselves there. They are representing this political party. They said, I don't have eyes and ears, go and represent me. But you are not representing the members of that political party. They have got their own right as citizens. It doesn't mean that they can support you or not support you. They can support you. They can support you, and they can choose not to support you. Because the Constitution does not say here, it does not say, provided you are not a member of a political party. It doesn't say that. It doesn't say you must lose your membership. It doesn't say you must resign. And I'm still surprised by people who demand resignations from political parties, and specifically from SWAPO. Now, Article 4, C, A, number 4, 4, says, a member of SWAPO shall lose their membership, A, by resignation, and B, by expulsion. Two things. It's a voluntary organization. You go in and you come out. Nowhere in the writings and governance of the Swapo Party is it written that a member may ask another member to resign. I said you are entitled to your opinion, but your opinion should not infringe the rights of others. Nowhere is it written as such. And in addition to that, Article 4C. 2K of the Swapo Party Constitution says that a member of Swapo shall be sincere and honest. I want a sincere member of Swapo and an honest member of Swapo to tell me where in the Swapo Party Constitution or in the Namibian Constitution is it written and said, should you seek the highest office of this land, you must first resign from a political party. I will challenge everybody from my comrade, comrade Hake Keiko, to the section leader of the Swapo Party to show me that. I will publicly ask that.
We are nearly getting there. After we have gone through this one, 35 years, you must be an Alibian, you must be registered, no criminal record, 500 registered, nomination by registered voters, seconded by another voter, and you pay 10,000. That is for an independent presidential candidate. Rule number 20 of the Swapo Party rules for electing party office bearers states that any inspiring candidate for any election shall be in good standing in relation to his one percent and annual membership. And he's saying any for any election. Good standing means you see the word used there is continuous stance. Good standing. You don't just say there is an election, you say, how many years didn't I pay? Let me go and pay them all in one. That's not being in good standing. Okay? You don't get stopped by the police and say, where is your driver's license? And say, oh, let me just go and pass my driver's license. No, you don't do that when punitive measures are at hand. Good standing means whenever it's needed. For 29 of this Namibian constitution states that the term of office of the president is five years. The mandate you got from the Namibian people is five years. Five years. No more. And the law says that five months before the end of term of office of the president, there shall be elections. Shall, not may, shall. The law, limitations. The law, the constitution and any anyway, does not state that an independent presidential candidate must not be a member of the political party because that would deny you this article 21 where we've got our freedom freedom of association freedom to join political parties unions is in article 21 of the namibian constitution so we can't limit people because of their association it's like giving with the right hand and you take away with the left hand. No. And we know that Article 131 of the Namibian Constitution prohibits any change there too. It does not say that you must resign from a political party either. It doesn't say that. And anybody who's saying that, they are playing constitution and they are playing lawmakers and they are making their own law. You see, Article 2 of the Swapo Party Constitution says that Swapo is a mass movement born and stilled in the crucible of a heroic struggle founded on the principles of democracy, solidarity, freedom, social justice, and progress. And code of conduct of the Swapo Party, code number nine, states that the core values of the Swapo Party is elected leadership, collective leadership, criticism and self-criticism, consultation, and democratic centralism, the voice of the majority. Unless the person who is saying you must first of all resign from the political party to stand as an independent candidate is superior than the Swapo constitution and above all superior than the Namibian constitution, then they have got the power to say that. But if that power is not vested in an authority, you've got freedom of speech. Wonderful Namibia. You can say what you want. But what you say should not infringe upon the rights of other citizens. Your freedom ends at the boundary where the rights of the other person starts. We've got freedom of religion. But if you've got a church that is singing in a residential area 12 o'clock at night, really loudly, 
You've got the right to a peaceful sleep. That singing will be now infringing on your right to sleep. So your right goes as far as the right of the other person begins. Now rights have got responsibilities and you must exercise them with that responsibility of expecting and respecting the rights of others. Upon the president of Namibia, the prime minister and all ministers and all the councillors, it's an authoritative demand because it says shall, shall uphold, shall protect, shall defend, shall obey and execute and implement the Namibian constitution and the laws of the Republic of Namibia. How can anyone who has taken that oath then come and tell people you can do this when you are exercising your constitutional right which they have got an obligation in their oath to defend and to uphold. This includes the legal person, Swapo Party. Collectively or otherwise, Swapo Party has got no authority under the Namibian constitution whatsoever to expel anybody from the party for exercising your fundamental rights to participate in peaceful political activities intended to influence the composition of government on this occasion. Nowhere is it written. And in fact, the constitution is saying you must uphold it. Anyone, and I will challenge the president of the Republic of Namibia in his capacity as president of SWAPO, the prime minister, all the ministers, all functionaries of the SWAPO party, to tell this nation, are you true to your oath of office? If you are, then don't ask Dr. Itula not to stand as an independent candidate because you, in fact, by virtue of your oath, is supporting me. I can truly say that lawfully. That Comrade Harry Jacob, in his capacity as president of Namibia, is supporting Dr. Itula's independence as candidate because he took an oath to do that. So the prime minister, so all the ministers, so all the functionaries who are acting on behalf of the Swapo Party, and so Swapo Party. Perhaps I will be the only independent presidential candidate supported even by the incumbent president because he's taken the oath of office to do so. Let them tell us in the weeks coming whether I'm right or not. The question is, does His Excellency Comrade Hake Ginko not support Section 72 of the Electoral Act that makes provision for the independent presidential candidate? I'm not asking that question because His Excellency said anything. I'm asking it because he took an oath of office to support, uphold the laws of the Republic of Namibia, in which the independent candidate is written, authored, and he was the chairperson of the Constituents' Assembly. So, the Swapo Party has got no powers whatsoever to expel a member who chooses to exercise their constitutional right. And I will ask the entire leadership of Swapo, from the president to the section leaders, to find the powers in our governance in the constitution to expel me. Because I will not resign. So don't be intimidated in your villages, in your towns, in your homes, that what you are doing to support Dr. Itula seeking the presidents of this country is wrong. It is not. Don't be threatened. It's against the law. It's a criminal offense. And they know it. Do not shy away from fulfilling your patriotic duty of choosing who you wish to be your leaders should those elections come about.
intimidation, coercion are not features of democracy. No SWAP member has got the right whatsoever. I would call it misconduct. To instruct anybody to state in any form, in any formula, in any forum, in any meeting, and demand the resignation of another. Well, surprise, surprise, some of them demanding the resignation of Dr. Itula found me here, found me in Swapo. How can you go into somebody who's contributed in building their own home and they welcome you in and then tomorrow you say, excuse me, can you just get out? <laughs> it doesn't make logic. Even if I found you in Swapo since I joined in 71, you do still not have the right to do that. Show me the right in the constitution of the Swapo party when it says that. Whether it's now in Article 4 that describes our rights and obligations. There is no obligation in Article 4C2 which states that a member of Swapo can or may ask another member to resign. No way. The reason why Swapo is right and the leaders of Swapo are wrong is because the leaders of Swapo are not following the Swapo constitution and the Swapo rules. They are inventing their rules, their own constitution to satisfy their own intentions. Now, don't form a political party and agree on the constitution and the rules of how we do things and then you go next day when we elect you, you turn around and you make your own kitchen made laws. SWAPO is a formidable organization that's got firm roots not only in Namibia but in the world where some of us have been campaigning. And it's a respected organization. Don't tarnish its image. Don't tarnish the image for which so many sacrificed. Don't tarnish the image of our freedom fighters that walk distances in boots that they have not changed, sleeping in bushes among snakes, seeing their own comrades dying and picking up their weapon and boots. Don't tarnish the image of those that has been imprisoned in this country and tortured, including Robert Island of Hobabes, where I was, by leading the Swapo Party in your own interest. It's a mass movement. Born and stilled, hardened in the crucible of a heroic struggle. That struggle has got its heroes and heroines that has sacrificed. So don't tarnish their blood. Dr. Itula is and will and shall exercise, like any other citizen, his democratic right enshrined in the constitution, born out of the suffering and sacrifices of our people. Article 4 gives me that right. We've got a problem. The only institution in Swapo, which is an administrative body, empowered by the constitution in Article 7, number 10, to expel a member of SWAPO is the Politburo. The Politburo is an extension of administrative duties of the Central Committee. Although some people think that the Politburo of SWAPO party is a powerful organization. No. The only organ that has got authority from Congress and between Congresses to make decisions is the Central Committee. Rule 40.2 of the Swapo Party Rules for Electing Leaders states that there will be 56 members of the Central Committee elected at Congress. And then four representing the wings and the affiliate organization. And they will be endorsed in the incoming Central Committee. 
as members, ex officios of the Central Committee. That rule carries on to say that, in addition, the 14, 13 previously, regional coordinators will be endorsed in the incoming Central Committee as ex officios. And the four, the top leaders, the president, vice president, and the secretary general, and the deputy secretary general, shall be ex officios in the Central Committee. Effectively, we've got only 56 in the Swapo Party Central Committee. There is got an entitlement to attend and vote in the Central Committee. All the others, including the president, are ex officios. They are there by virtue of an office. Officers don't vote. The right to elect and be elected, which is enshrined in Article 4C1E of the Swapo Party Constitution, pertains to the individual members of the party not to the officers, and that goes for ex officios from the councillors that goes in executive committee meetings. Therefore, at Congress in 2017, Congress should have endorsed the representative of the Whigs, the 14 regional coordinators, and the top four in the central committee of the Swapo Party. Then, they belong to that forum. The president of the Swapo Party chaired the central committee of the Swapo Party to elect the Politburo. But, he was not endorsed in them. He therefore didn't belong to the central committee. So a meeting chaired by somebody who doesn't belong there cannot make valid decision. So the Politburo that was born out of the central committee, which has got the power to expel members, can't exercise that power. We are victims of ignorance of our own rules. So, that's what I said. And if they do that, let's meet at the court of justice. At least, we have got one thing in Namibia still, courts of justice. Truly impartial. Shouldn't do that. Not at all. We don't have money. <laughs> it's not because of us. Even those that know we don't have money are wasting money traveling around, campaigning about elections. And they call us also a Fiona and then they come and ask us for 2%. <laughs> So, what are the advantages of an independent presidential candidate? What can you do? You can do everything else than any other president that is elected through a party ticket that is representing the party can do. You can bring in eight people into your parliament. Eight from anywhere. As long as they are capable of executing their duties for the benefit of the entire Namibian people. You can decide who you allocate certain duties. It's not jobs for, for, for comrades anymore. There was something that, you oh, see, I had to make this cabinet so large because my friends need jobs. What about the Namibian people? What do they need? They need shelter. They need health care, they need schools, they need chairs in the schools. And you are creating jobs for your friends? Expanding ministries? Why can't we put the Ministry of Land, Forestry, Environment, Tourism all in one port? Fisheries and Agriculture all in one port. Health, gender, poverty, marginalized, all in one port. Youth, education, and all the education, all in one point, and cut that whole bill from 26 to 10. <laughs> 10 ministries with three cars each, with three drivers each of two, with housing allowances, spending money and telephone money, and I don't know whether it's got other things as well. I'm not part of that, I've never been there. And deputy ministers. Deadwood, sitting in offices and just coming around and then what they call honorable. Honored for what? 
sitting in an office, can't sign anything unless the minister is there, can't make decisions, get rid of them. Just put directors. Can you imagine this small population with only 10 cabinet ministers, of which at least six must be young, under 35? Africans say they will be the real and not youngers. So, when yes, I was here, they will be big. When are we going to get our youth to run this country when we are no longer here? Your time will come. Your time is now, young people. If you don't get on this train of Dr. Itula and say, when November comes, that is the train that takes us to the destination of youth empowerment. If you don't take that train, if you don't read your laws and understand them and represent them the way that they are designed to be, you will forever be told, your time will come collectively decided on a swap of manifesto, blue, red, green. I don't know what, what, what color is the Harambe manifesto with the five pillars. I don't even know what color it is. And I was explaining to the people as I'm campaigning, you vote swap, this is what we are going to deliver. And then came Harambe. Okay. And I thought to myself now, we believe in consultation, in swap party. Let me explain this again. There's nothing wrong with swap. Nothing wrong with the aims and objectives of SWAPO. Nothing wrong with the SWAPO party political program. It's something to do with the leaders. How can we elect somebody on a SWAPO party manifesto and the next day they produce their own manifesto called Harambe? Where in the SWAPO party central committee or politburo was a policy called Harambe conceived? Where? We don't give powers to people in order for those people to then decide, I am the president, I'll do this. <coughs> Let me tell you one thing. All the ministers are members of SWAP. Most of them. All the ambassadors are members of SWAP. Who is saying that? Only members of SWAPO has the intelligence to create thoughts of how to run this country. Who says that there are no elements in the, in, in the other political parties, manifestos, that are true to Namibia? Independent means not running on the party's ticket. But as I demonstrated, irrespective of somebody running on the party's ticket, you've got no guarantee that they will implement that manifesto. At least you've got one guarantee in me, I am a true member of SWAPO, and I will do what the party in the majority states. I will respect the office occupied, the office occupied by those who comply with the decision of the majority, even if I don't agree with them. The office is what us as Namibians created. Which manifesto are you going to create? Ah, you don't want me to let the cat out of the bag now, do you? No. I will tell you, it will only have five things. Five things only. We had about three of them here today. I alluded to two of them as well. Five things that will get this nation moving. But I can't tell you, because we don't have an election now. Come the election, you'll get the manifesto. Yeah. That, that's called democracy, yeah? I answered your question without answering. <laughs> be taken from office? That is the question, isn't it? Unlike in South Africa, where the president is elected by parliament, in Namibia, the president is elected by the people. 
through a first pass the post system. Clear on that one? So it's the people of Namibia that will have the power to take me off office, unlike in South Africa. Now, under what circumstances? For serious violation of the Namibian constitution. What would be the circumstances under which a president may violate seriously the Namibian constitution? And that protection is built in the Namibian constitution to ensure that because there is independence of candidacy, that the parliament cannot just come up with a vote of no confidence in uh, the president. Now, have you read the Namibia moved from office if a two-thirds majority of all the members of the National Assembly confirmed by a two-thirds majority of the members of the National Council adopts a resolution impeaching the president on the ground that he or she has been guilty of a violation of constitution or guilty of a serious violation of the laws of the land or otherwise guilty of such gross misconduct or ineptitude as to render him or her unfit to hold with dignity and honor the office of president. Did you get that, yeah? yeah? Okay. Now, I have read that one, and I will read this one. In the Swapo Party's Rules and Procedures. Okay, it's Rule 49. In terms of the Electoral Act, Act, Five, uh, Act of 92 is amended, those candidates who stand on the party ticket are essentially sponsored by the party. It is the party that spends money and other resources to campaign for them. Once they are elected, they cannot turn around and say that the party should not have a say in the manner in which they conduct themselves, in the position in which they have been elected. I shouldn't be reading this. I should actually have somebody impartial to read it, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. Okay? Just trust me, I'm reading what they say. Okay? So they cannot turn around and say that the party should not have a say in the manner in which they conduct themselves, in the position in which they have been elected. So, now, your question was accountability. The president standing on the ticket of the party, representing that party, according to that rule, is accountable to the party, not to the electorate. Are you in agreement with me? It's accountable only to the party. Whereas, should I be standing as an independent candidate, elected directly by the public, I am accountable to you. This is where the difference is. Who exercises more public accountability than a group of people, including myself, I suppose. It's accountable to the party. But when he says accountable to the party,